So um, today we are going to tackle on um, how to uh, visualize, um, how to explore and uh, visualize uh, LiDAR data. So um, I will just go ahead and share my screen uh, to take us through a few things on how to visualize and um, explore LiDAR data. I, I hope you are able to see my screen. So, um, maybe, um, maybe I, I want to start by asking a question, uh, what is a LiDAR data? So, anyone who maybe could uh, tell us what a LiDAR data is. Anyone from the call who can tell us what LiDAR data is? Oh yeah, Michael, I can see saying it's like a radar, uh, but it uses light for detection and ranging. Yeah. Is there anyone else who could unmute and then Maybe speak. Yes, Tafa. Yeah, hi, good man. So I just learned about it this um, morning. Um, so it's a like a method for determining whether there's an object or surface, for instance, like um, using the laser from light, right? Yeah. Thanks, 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 Rafa, for that. Yes, Daisy. Um, also, just to build on what Rafa has said, it's um, so what's coming out of the uh, what's coming out of the sensor is a pulse, and what's going back as um data now becomes the return. So now, basically, later data is going to be a collection of these discrete returns from the sensor. Thanks, thanks for that. Thank you. Do, you. do you have anyone else who wants to give an addition? Okay, so maybe we can just proceed and then I want to show us maybe the first thing. Um, so, um, with me here, I have um, um, uh, a given number of codes, which uh, just try trying to explain on uh, how to visualize uh, LiDAR data. So, um, so um, the first one that I want to take us through is this one here. So, um, having a, an understanding of uh, what LiDAR data is and uh, we, we are trying to uh, get to explore uh, that given data so that we are able to detect given images or given objects in uh, an environment. So um, the, this first uh, notebook here is just uh, one that is trying to identify given number of points of this given diagram here. And uh, it, it um, displays uh, it displays uh, the resultant of it. Um, so we are trying to detect given uh, uh, points in a, in a certain image, and then we uh, we return we return um, the, the resulting value, which gives us uh, the markings of different points of that uh, given image. So um, 
you you will realize also that in uh, lidar data it's being used especially uh, mostly when we also want to do uh, given types of detections especially uh, object detections and also uh, creating of uh, um, um, image detection so uh, for example in this one here um, we have um, um, this given code here which is trying to detect uh, a given object of a pedestrian in, uh, in, in, in this given picture of this environment so as, um, as, as you can see how this image is detected or um, how this display is there are different or several uh, uh, points that uh, have been uh, marked in this uh, in this given in this given image. So these given uh, points that have been marked here um, are like the uh, the data points. So, so we are trying to identify from those given points uh, a certain or a given image from it, and then we be able to show that maybe this image that is given here is maybe an image of maybe a pedestrian so um so from from this uh, uh from this picture the previous uh, the original image of, of the original picture that we're working with is this one and um as you can see um we have got a pedestrian in uh, uh in this picture here but now um, our work is now to like detect uh, the points that give us um, this given the uh, the points that give us this um, this given um, image here to be like a one for a pedestrian. And as you can see, as it maps um, the different points here, um, you you can see that uh, there are different colors that um, have been given to different objects like for example we can identify that there's an object here which has a different color we can also mark that maybe um, the road here is an object which is also marked with a different color and if you can see also the one for um, uh, the one for um, the pedestrian here is also marked with uh, is also marked with uh, a little bit of a different color that is a green color so we are able to like um, detect that gi this given uh, image here or this given points in um, in this um, this given points in this data uh, represent one for a pedestrian so um, that is that in terms of detecting of uh, uh, to detect an object in a given uh, image when you're using um, later data, especially for, for detections of, of, uh, of given uh, objects in an environment. Um, so um, this week, basically, we are trying to use different, um, we are trying to use later data so that we are able to visualize um, a given um, area or a given land map so that we are able to see like uh, in which uh, specific area are we going to have uh, uh, more water or something like that so that we're able to detect like yeah especially in a maize production farm um, uh, we would expect like, yeah, there's a lot of water that is gathering towards one point and then, yeah, there is um, this other point which is maybe it's slanted. So we, we are trying to uh, detect given points in, um, in, in a, a given area or land or earth map. So I will check us shortly also on how we can be able to do um, uh, visualizations in, uh, in with with, with uh, raster. So, um, 
so in in this next maybe in this next uh, um, notebook we are trying to visualize a given um, area in, in in terms of mapping so that we detect the points in um, a given uh, art frame so um, so here we uh, so we, we first of all import the uh, the number of uh, the packages that we're going to use uh, the matplotlib um, rasterio and then we have geopandas and then Astley, so that um, after importing them then uh, we prepare the the lands the land search bands so that uh, um, it is able we, we so so that um, it can be stacked using um, the globe so uh, after uh, being able to do that we uh, use um, a figure so that we are able to um, map a given set of area like for example we are using this given figure here and from this given figure here we can be able to detect a few uh, objects in it and then um, we uh, we use now um, a stereo so that we are able to uh, detect from our map um, the points that we want to focus on and then the other points that uh, we are not focusing on um, you can see they are mapped with uh, pink and then after that from the points that we are focusing on we can be able to deduce or come up with this given map of this area that we uh, we are focusing um, our visualization on, and from the, here we can be able to uh, with um, the given uh, as, as as we can be able to see like you can be able to mark different points with given um, colors in it. Uh, so from there, like you can see. Uh, what um, uh, Raster is giving us from this given um, piece of uh, of land or the globe that we uh, are trying to focus uh, to visualize, and then um, from there, when we now try to uh, identify or detect given. In, given objects or images from it we can be able to come up with um, a few things in it uh, and uh, it's it's able to map for us um, given maybe this is a given object or something that is here and then from from that um, uh, here we're just trying to show some um, histogram of uh, of of a raster and then um, from it, uh, we can be able to uh, also um, this given uh, map here now gives us uh, um, given points, given data points in in in, uh, in the given image that you are having, and then from that we, we are able to detect like uh, the given. Uh, uh, the lines that we are able to come up with here, they, are, they detect like given data points in, um, in that given image so that we are able to like see uh, the different uh, um, the different um, uh, contours or because you can see from the marking here we have like different kinds of contours that we have in this um, given um, image of um, the globe that we uh, are representing yeah and then from there now um, now that gives us only now the, the 2d plotting of uh, of this given uh, map that we we are working on yeah and then maybe i will show us also um, how how we can also use maybe 3d 
in uh, in plotting um, in visualizing live data, especially of uh, a given of a given um, of a given uh, map or a specific area that we are working on. And in this one here, we are going to use uh, a leaf map so that uh, we are able to um, deduce, um, we're going to use a leaf map and we're going to use 3D so that we are able to visualize like for a given um, area in a, um, a certain place, we are able to also uh, get a 3D visualization of that given uh, that given area. So we install um, the leaf map for uh, LiDAR data and then after that, um, yeah, we import the leaflet and the OS. Then um, uh, this one now tells us where we can find that data, the, the data, the data set for, for this LiDAR, um, for this LiDAR data. And then uh, we be able to uh, see, we, we read the, the LiDAR data. After reading it, we can be able to see the head, the number of points that are there. And then we inspect the X, Y, and Z, and then the intensity of um, the intensity of the loss. Um, then after that, now we use uh, like uh, Pi Vista so that we are able to um, so that we are able to uh, um, to come up with this given. Uh, uh, given 3D map that shows us the different uh, uh, the different objects that are in this map and it can also give us uh, a visualization, a 3D visualization of that um, given area in a map. Then um, after that, now um, we can also be able to uh, visualize LiDAR data using the IPyGani backend. So um, with this here, we can, you, um, using the leaf map, we can be able to like see, um, we can be able to um, give um, different colors so that we are able to see like what color um, uh, maybe um, maybe the representation of um, uh, a given map. So like, for example, as you can see here, like we can choose uh, different colors in this given map, and then we are able to see how um, those colors play out in, in the visualization of uh, a given LiDAR data. Um, yeah, and then also, um, we can visualize LiDAR data also using uh, the panel backend, uh, where here we can be able to like see um, 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 the panel backend. I think is, is the one that the, the previous one. Then here we can be able also to see using 3D. Um, uh, the 3D we can be able to see like. Um, uh, from here, we, we are able to see the different types of mappings that are there in this given uh, map. And then we can also be able to see uh, the objects as they appear in, in, in 3D. So um, this actually gives us a, a better visualization of uh, the LiDAR data that has been collected. So uh, like here, you can be able to see um, how high or uh, the um, how high a certain ground is or how uh, low, how they compare uh, in terms of um, in terms of uh, the height of or how they lie on, on a surface. So as you can see from uh, this given um, um, 3D visualization, we can be able to see how the different objects uh, appear and uh, we can also be able to see how uh, they compare in terms of how they lie on the ground. 
yeah and um, um and that is that in terms of uh, visualization of um, of lidar data so um in a nutshell we uh, have seen that we can visualize uh, the lidar data using uh, uh, using 3d um, 3d open 3d backend uh, we can also use uh, the panel um, which gives us uh, a, a, a good view of how um, the objects are in the ground and then we can also be able to use uh, ipy gani to uh, visualize um, a lighter data um, yeah and also uh, the last one that we've seen is the pi vista uh, which uh, we can use also in visualizing um, the data and as you can see you can see how um, these different um, uh, the different methods in which we have used how they compare in terms of uh, one another the pi vista how the pi vista looks like uh, how the ipy gani uh, looks like in the visualization and uh, how the panel looks like in, in terms of visualizing your your lidar data and how also the open 3d um, gives uh, the output of uh, the visualization of uh, lidar data so um, so that is that in terms of uh, the visualization of uh, a given uh, lidar data uh, the most or the key thing uh, that comes with the visualization is um, um, getting to install uh, these packages so that you can be able to use them because I realized even in installation of uh, raster um, someone could have a problem in the installation of raster um, the installation of um, uh, geopandas and also uh, if you're going to use pedal for um, um, for doing the, the project that we have this this week so um, with that maybe I would love to uh, get a few questions uh, and maybe some comments on the class and then we'll see Can you guide? Okay, so um primate you're asking how you um can be able to get the fetch the data okay so um for fetching the data especially the one for uh this week uh i am not sure where i'm not sure where where, where, where the data is but uh, i think that is why um uh, you are being told to have your search keys ready so that um, like I, I think um, I, I'm not sure where, 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 where the data is uh, maybe most are you sure where the data is So um so um for the data I think you will create just uh, 
you will create a, a Python code that is going to uh, fetch the data from um, um, from this given, I think he has sent it here, from this given, uh, uh, this given link here, and then, yeah. So after creating um, a code that is going to fetch this data, so we'll be able to fetch the data so that you're able to use it for um, the project of this week. I'm not sure if that answers your question, Remit. Yes, Musa. Uh, yeah, sorry, I didn't have sound. Um, I think the data is in the challenge document. I've just pasted a link uh, on the chat there so they can find the data there. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Um, there's a hand. Does that also answer your question in terms of uh, um, fetching the data? Okay. So, so Mm. Uh, Desmond, so I yes. think to download, so this is the page with the data, right? Uh, I think to download it, they have to execute an S3 command. <clears throat> uh, but I've been trying to check online if I can actually view this uh, uh, directory on S3. It's not coming up, uh, but there's a command there to... Uh, well, this is to list, uh, it says LS, but you know, you can change this to CP uh, dash R to copy the folder uh, to your local. Uh, I can I can put in the the actual command to download, uh, but I'll, I'll check now for sure. But if you look to your right, it says AWS CLI. So that's the, the directory where the, that actual data is, is, is coming from. Um, yeah, so I'm not sure if someone posted a, a Google link here. So, uh, I'm not sure if they've already downloaded it or not because yeah, they did say it, it was quite large, uh, about 100 gigs or something like that. But yeah. Um, I'm sure if that answers the question to Michael? Uh, uh, this month? Yes. If I could just share my screen quickly. OK, fine. Uh, just for one second. I just want to show you, so I've just executed the, the command that I pasted, the S3 command to list. So you, you guys can see it. So this is the command. This is to list. So LS says you're listing and you're listing data in this S3. This is S3, but the bucket name is USGS LIDAR public, right? And these are all the, 
these are all the, the directories in there. So it, it is a lot of data, as you can see. So this is where the data is, right? So if you want to copy, um, I'm not gonna execute it, <clears throat> I'll just execute a small one. So if, let's say copy CP minus R. So you, it uses the typical uh, Linux uh, terminal commands. So I'll just copy a site sub directory instead of the whole thing. And then hide this. Uh, hide this. Uh, if I paste that, okay, it's just a subdirectory. <clears throat> and then I'm saying uh, copy it, copy it recursively with the minus R, right? So this minus R is just as copy recursively because I believe this is a directory and copy it to my current environment. And I say enter. Okay, it says unknown. Should is it? I think it should say as an SCP. Can I just try that? But it should say, oh, I think it's actually the recursive uh, word, not man, not minus R. But let's see what happens now. It's taking a while. It's thinking. Okay. I think it's okay. So I'm just gonna say recursive. It's probably this one. But in any case, while that thinks, if you do, so you have to install the AWS CLI on your machine if you want to download it to your machine. I'm just doing a demo here, but uh, I think Yabit did say that you can download it onto the AWS um, environment that you have. So you see it's downloading now, right? So that's what you need to do. But this is going to download the whole thing, right? It's gonna download the folder that I've selected because I wanted it to be quick, right? But what you want to do, you want to, down, you want to use this uh, URL to download. So you do CP recursive, and if, if it's a directory, it will download everything within that directory. I hope, I hope that makes sense. But you should be doing this within uh, the AWS environment unless you have a big machine. And you need to have this AWS CLI installed. So mine can run because I have AWS CLI installed. That's why this command can run. Yeah, that's it. I, I, hope, I hope that answers the question. I'm gonna stop sharing my screen now. Okay. Okay, so I think that answers the question to um, Michael, um, do do we do you have another question? Looks like we don't have anyone with another question. Okay. So um, if we don't have anyone with another question, uh, uh, maybe we could um, wrap up the class by saying that um, we we have seen how to how we can be able to, to visualize our data. So, um, in regards to um, the challenge of this week, um, we have seen how uh, after getting our data, now we are able to now uh, visualize it, and uh, from there we can be able now. So Biruk is asking how, how can I install Conda? Um, Musa, are you able to handle the question for Biruk? Uh, 
Uh, is the question on the on the chat? Yeah, I he's asking how to install Conda on AW. I think that should be AWS. Uh, so, so last time, um, Yabi had given a group, uh, certain people in the group, uh, admin access in AWS. So those are the people who can run sudo within the environment. So if you're part of a group, then that person, ask that person to install uh, Conda for you. I'm not sure if that answers it, but yeah, there's people, certain people with admin rights in AWS. Who, that's, those are the people who can install uh, Conda or any other package. I think I think bureau, I think we we talked last time. I think your your person with an admin rights in your group was Martin. Um, but you said you were having issues installing certain things. But last time he had uh, admin rights. Uh, and for different groups, there was other people who, who had admin rights, who had the ability to install. Uh, so I think, yeah, I'm, I may not be sure how to actually install in someone else's environment, uh, but I think if they install into your directory, right, then it will be in your environment because everyone has a directory. So if they CD into your directory and then install it locally into your directory, then you should have it. I hope that answers your question, Biru. Okay, so um, I'm not sure if we have anyone else in the question or we. And Okay, so if we are all satisfied, then I think we um, can be able to proceed with uh, um, more on Slack, and then um, we can call it D. Uh, yeah, so uh, Desmond, before you go, there's a comment here by Martin for Biruk to say that um, his uh, conda is installed. Uh, he just needs to source it. If he can just check the comments. Okay. So I think Biruk, you can you can try that. The comment that has been given by uh, Martin. So, yeah, looks like we don't have anyone else with a comment. Maybe we can end there and then we continue on Slack. So, have a nice evening, guys.